Howdy, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University. Today we are in the Department of Automotive Technology and this is our, our mobile fuels lab. And uh, today we're gonna be doing uh, gravities. And so um, we purchased, uh, I purchased in November of uh, 2020, uh, a, a gallon of uh, 91 octane, a gallon of 89 octane, and a gallon of um, 87 octane. And so we've already done some read vapor pressure testing the students have. And so uh, today, students are gonna be uh, measuring uh, gravities of these uh, fuels. And so I have the, uh, the three uh, samples of fuels over here, and they're in ice right now, because when I open up the container, I don't want any of the vapors to escape. So I try to chill them down as, uh, as cold as possible. Uh, so we open up the samples and uh, put them in our um, in our beakers to measure a gravity that 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 any of the light ends aren't escaping to kind of give us a um, a better test and and so what we like to do is measure things like the uh, the actual vapor pressure uh, the gravity of the fuel when it's brand new and then wait six months next semester and give it a try and see what happens to the fuel over time wait a year and check it again and see what happens to the fuel over the time so. In order to check uh, gravity of a fuel, which is a very common thing done in the um, in the field, is that you are going to need a a, a, um, a a hydrometer. And so I got lots of different ones. I got some uh, smaller ones that are here in front of me. I got some very larger ones that are are here behind me. And it really depends on if I want to use the small one or the large one. It depends on how big a sample I want. If I'm going to use a uh, put the fuel in a big uh, sample container like like this, and I'm going to use a um, um, a, um, a larger one, a longer one. If I have a very small beaker, <laughs> then I'm going to end up using um, one of these right here. So I'm thinking that if I'm going to put fuel in a jelly jar at the dealership to uh, to check the gravity of fuels, I want to buy a smaller hydrometer because I want to take up less volume, and obviously I don't need to have a very large container to put the uh, fuel in. When you're measuring uh, gravities. Uh, there's two different ways of doing it. You have specific gravity and you have an API and uh, there's two different ways. And so, so the key is, is that when you buy a hydrometer, it's either going to be a specific gravity uh, uh, hydrometer or an API um, uh, um, um, hydrometer. And people ask me, well, why are there two ways? And well, <laughs> you know, there's two ways to drive on the highway, on the left side of the road or on the right side of the road. And all over the world, it's done both different ways. And so, 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 so we'll teach you how to do both ways in case, because again, it really depends on what the hydrometer is, depends on um, which one you actually measure. So to get started, uh, we're going to go ahead and take some samples of fuels and we're going to put them in our containers. When I opened up my fuel container, I did hear pressure escape, which is good. That means that it was sealed correctly, so I like that. I do like to uh, use funnels when I'm, I'm doing this so I don't get fuel all over me, all over the place. And you do not want to fill your container up all the way. That's a rookie mistake I tell my students because then when you put your hydrometer in, it um, <laughs> you get fuel all over the place. You also don't want to fill it up only halfway because, the, because then the hydrometer bottoms out or you can't physically get it out because it's too far in there and can't get your fingers down long enough to get it out. So you need to fill it, and, you know, far enough up that you get the hydrometer in and out, but not far enough in where it spills over. One of the other things I like to do with this, and this is my 91 octane, is that I like to put, I use a aerosol caps so because it's the same size as this to help try to keep the, the vapors in as long as I can. So I like to do that and like to close up my container as soon as possible. So, and then I only do one at a time because that way, you know, as I'm checking the hydrometer with, with this particular unit, um, that I don't have vapors escaping over on another one. So right now we're doing the 91 octane. And so we're gonna take off this and we're gonna select the appropriate hydrometer. And I should have looked at these ahead of time to see which one is the best one. But we're gonna just try this one right here. So this one has on the, um, on the heavy end, <laughs> Need to change in my reading glasses because these numbers are small. Uh, 0.710 on the light end, 0 0.640. And so we'll see what happens here. And ooh, look, I almost did that too full. And so the key with this is that this did not drop down all the way, is what is the problem. So I'm going to look at my chart right now on this. And so, so I know that it is. Um, 
heavier than 0 0.71, 0 0.710 would be light automotive gasoline. And, and again, this is straight out of the pump, so I'll, you know, I'm assuming it's not light. I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit mild, medium, we'll call that. But I just wanted to see what it was and to kind of give you a good example of a problem. And so again, the hydrometer is uh, too light. It didn't drop down all the way, so we'll have to select another hydrometer. So this particular hydrometer goes from uh, 0 0.760 on the light end to 0.83. And so we're going to slowly go down, make sure it doesn't go down all the way to the bottom. Ooh, it went all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so that one was too heavy is what that was. So it started at 0.76, so I'm between 0.76 and 0.71, so I wanted to show you an example of um, one dropping down to the bottom and it's too heavy. And so I, a lot of times students will ask, well, well, how do I get that out if you can't? Again, I can reach that with my finger, but I don't particularly want to stick my um, fingers in that. So, um, so in order to do that, you have to get yourself a, a special tool. So my special tool is a rubber hose is all that is. And so I'll stick that in there and, um, and it grabs it. And that way I don't stick my fingers in the fuel. So I need to find a specific gravity hydrometer that's between 0.76 and 0.71. Okay, so this guy right here starts at 0.7 and goes all the way up to 0.81. So this one should work out just great. And I recommend that if you're doing a lot of automotive testing that you're going to want to try to get a hydrometer from, uh, you know, 0.75 on the light end all the way up to um, maybe uh, 80, 0 0.80 on the, on the heavy end. That's a good range for gasoline. And so you can see that the hydrometer is floating inside there. And the hydrometers, you know, we're used to measuring uh, the specific gravity of maybe coolant or of, of, of the battery itself. So, you know, this is not a something that technicians are unfamiliar with. And I'm gonna look right there at that spot right there where the line is intersecting with the, um, with the, and I'm gonna spin this just a little bit to try to see bobbing up and down a little bit. So I'm gonna have to wait for it to stop bobbing up and down on that. Now the specific gravity of, um, of water is 1.00 so that's the baseline and so remember water is heavy water is heavier than fuel if there's water in this the water would be at the very bottom so water is heavier than fuel oil heavier than water uh, i'm sorry water is heavier than oil and fuel and so um so the key is, is that think about that one is uh, uh 0 0.1 or 1.0 is 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 heavy and you know 0.9 sometimes a little bit lighter 0.8 is a little bit lighter 0.7 you know as the number um as the number drops down you know the fuels are getting lighter and lighter and lighter and so um, right now we are at uh, 0.73 one two three not quite five point seven three 0.734 is what I'm going to call that, 0.734. So our, our gravity is 0.734, specific gravity. And so uh, that gravity, uh, if it was 60 degrees in here, we would leave it just as that. But uh, uh, any fluids uh, uh, changes um, density depending upon temperature. And so, um, uh, with specific gravity, uh, if you're um, anytime you're above 60 or below 60 degrees, you have to kind of do a, a calculation to determine what the actual uh, uh, gravity is at this particular temperature. Temperature. So uh, today in the classroom, it's 70 degrees. So for every 10 degrees, and I did the calculation here. So for every 10 degrees um, above 60 degrees, you have to add 0 0.005 to your calculation. Every 10 degrees you were below 60 degrees, you would subtract 0 0.005. So think about this. As the uh, fluid is warmer, it is uh, less dense. 
And so, so you're gonna you're gonna add that up. And so my total specific gravity is 0.739, which puts us exactly at medium automotive gasoline on my chart that I have. I have a reference chart here that I'm looking at. Uh, it, it's 0.730. Uh, heavy gasoline would be uh, 0.750. So again, it's right where I expect it to be at. Again, that's my baseline. That's what I expect to be at the pump. Uh, uh, it would be, uh, again, we're going to take a look at this and see three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, uh, if the density, if the gravity of this uh, uh, changes over, over time and what happens to gasoline as it gets older. Next, we're going to check the others and uh, see if they're all about the same gravity, which we hope they are, somewhere around uh, medium uh, gasoline range. We'll be back. Okay, looks like our 89 octane is 0.73, oh, nope, that's not right, 0 0.72, so there's 30, one, 0.727, so 0.727, and I'm gonna do my math to make sure that I do that right. And so my specific gravity, so again, it's 0.727, and I'm gonna add 0 0.005 because I am, again, at 70 degrees in here versus 60, so remember every Every 10 degrees, you know, we're going to adjust that. And um, 0.732 is specific gravity. So very similar to my 91 octane, uh, a little bit lighter, but uh, you know, all within normal parameters. Next, we are going to check our 87 octane. What do you guys see what I was looking at on that hydrometer and so you can see 0 0.730 below the um, line and 0.725 is above that, the halfway mark between uh, 0 0.7. And so we're looking at probably um, 0 0.727. I'm gonna call that 0 0.727, maybe 728. You can say that 0 0.7275, how's that for you? We have our final results, and so for our 91 octane, uh, after adjusted for our, our temperature of 70 degrees, we have a specific gravity of 0.739. That's right in the mid-range of medium automotive gasoline, which is what you would expect getting it out of the pump in November. Our 89 octane was uh, 0.732, so again, very similar as far as um, um, uh, medium, you know, range gasoline. Not real heavy, not real light, right in the medium range. And then our 87 octane was 0.733 as far as specific gravity. So again, they so so as far as going to the pump and going from 87 octane to 89 octane to 91 octane, that the the specific gravity, the gravity of, of the fuel. Is similar. There's no great difference between one versus the other. Uh, one would not give you more damage, or uh, or maybe less damage because of the um, the specific gravity factor itself. Typically, if a fuel is a little bit heavier, um, it tends to have more BTUs uh, per uh, per pound. But you know, in this case, I would say that the variation is uh, limited to where it, it's not a big difference. So again, this is our baseline for our fuel and we'll be back again in three months, six months, in a year and see what happens uh, with this fuel as uh, age goes by. Next, we're going to uh, check uh, the API gravity. So again, you may have a specific gravity hydrometer, you may have an API uh, hydrometer. And so the numbering system is uh, different between the two. And so with, a, um, with the API, uh, a gravity of 10 is water, so so water as heavy as 10, and as the as as the um, as the um, the fuel or the oil gets uh, lighter, the numbering goes up. So so 10 is the heavy point, and then it goes to 
20 is heavier and 30 and so as the fuel gets heavier the number goes up higher which is just the opposite of specific specific gravity so that's what confuses most of the students is that the baseline and the way the number goes up or down is is backwards but we're going to test our uh, we'll do our 91 octane first and again i have a, a cap on it to try to protect my vapors and so I'm going to guess that it's going to be probably right around the low 60s because I already know what my specific gravity is. So, you know, I know that 0.73 is somewhere around, you know, the low 60s. And so as I watch this guy bob up and down, turn it to me where I can see it. You know, you could use a chart to compare, hey, if I have specific gravity, I could use a chart to see what the um, API gravity is. And that's going to give you, you know, a pretty close value. Okay, so my gravity is it's still bouncing up and down a little bit, but it looks like it's right around 62. And so it's not 62 and a half, it's not 62.1, it's right, and I'm looking at just at the bottom of my uh, fluid line. I'm going to call that 62. So What's the what's different about about uh, API is that for every 10 degrees you're beyond the 60 degree mark you're going to subtract one and so what that is is that that's saying that hey that I my actual measurement was a uh, 62 API gravity but I'm 10 degrees you know above that so my fluid is not as dense as it would be at 60 degrees it's a little bit lighter and so I'm going to subtract a number because remember the the um, the higher the number the heavier sorry the lighter the fuel is and so uh, uh, we'll call that a 61 api is what we would call that and again if i go to my chart and look at what a 61 is a 61 is you know right there with medium automotive gasoline that's what that is Hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, lesson today on how to do uh, specific gravity and uh, API gravity. Um, if I did API gravity on these others, it's going to be very similar to what we saw. It's going to be very similar around, you know, 61, 62, somewhere in there. If you guys are looking for more automotive educational videos, you could uh, visit my YouTube channel, uh, Professor Pintain. I'm also on uh, Facebook and you could uh, look for my, um, my website. ProfessorPintain.com. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.